If you have any strength left to gather, then you should use it to carry the girl to safety. What for? See all that blood? No one lives through that! What's the point in trying to save somebody who's dead? Rachel Gardner is still alive. If you leave at once, then her life will be saved. Listen carefully. Make haste and you will see. But you must go immediately. You'll understand in due time. Imagine that things would turn out this way. Uh, Reverend Gray, why? I admit I was self-serving. And I know I was supposed to do as you told me. But still, none of the things that I did were wrong. Even if it was for myself, I helped you. My efforts to thwart Rachel and Zach were protecting the rules of this building from being broken, so it was your gain! It's fair to say your endeavors allowed me to see something of profound interest to my study. At the start, I was convinced Isaac Foster was a being that possessed invisible wings. But now, after all that's happened, those wings are entirely imperceptible to me. Invisible wings? Did you actually believe Zack was some kind of angel? Yes, for a while I did. Because he thought only of killing. To me, that made him seem so pure. But recently, Isaac learned to wield his blade for the benefit of someone besides himself. As a result, his weapon was destroyed, and he fell from heaven's ranks to become human. No, perhaps I should say he was human all along. What's more, the one who opened my eyes to that reality was Rachel Gardner, the young girl whom I had denounced as a witch. Her transformation was as striking as it was confusing. How could one so self-serving and rife with contradiction change so much? But looking back, it was I who tried to stamp out Isaac's humanity. The blame is all mine. If that's how you feel, then why did you shoot me? I suppose it was my vain attempt to atone for what I've done. Now, my observation and experiments are complete as is my responsibility to stand in place of God. After all this, it ends here? And Danny, you are the one who brought me Rachel. But although you were meant to steal her soul, your true intention was helping her gain one. Admit it, everything you did for her was part of your attempt to become her God, was it not? <laughs> but it was no use, because you are not God. Doctor, you must have been aware of that. Without so... the coming God in Rachel's eyes, I'd have had nothing. When I first gazed into those perfect works of art, I knew they belonged to someone who'd lost all hope and would never love another soul. So I wanted to give them my love for eternity. I thought my life was over. Then those peepers gave me a reason to keep living. I felt like I could do anything at all. But I can't love them any longer. If Rachel isn't alone anymore, there's no one left who will accept the ugly thing that I am. Then you mean that by offering your devotion to her, you were hoping you could eventually earn her love in return, is that correct? <gasps> Danny, despite everything, you and I are nothing but human beings. That's all? No more? No one who ever set foot in this building was anything but human. Humans are the ones who create God, and angels, and the differences between. In fact, Rachel Gardner may have been the greatest example of all. The only entity who ever damned anyone wasn't God, but mankind. Reverend Gray. The people in here, what was it that you saw in all of them? Sadly, what I observed was no different than what I'd always seen in humans. 
They were all so ugly, so selfish, so lost, yet so beautiful. Such simple truths. Of course, as one of my angels, the same thing is true of you. But somehow, even though you were here longer than any of the rest, I didn't see it till now. Forgive me. I think it's obvious that this is the end for me. Thank you. But saying I'm beautiful doesn't do much good now, you know? We made it out! He said if we escaped, you'd be saved. What did that mean? What do I do now? As for the young girl found at the scene, investigators have identified her as Rachel Gardner, who after her parents' death had recently been reported missing. One of the suspects in the explosion case is Isaac Foster. In fact, reports say he's already connected to several crimes. Excuse me, sir. Has Isaac Foster confessed? He's not the one responsible for the explosion. Actually, he denies kidnapping Rachel Gardner. And he says that he has no connection to the murder of her parents. Has he also denied involvement in other crimes? No, he actually owned up to several without any trouble. Nothing I hate more than a lie, he kept saying. Are you sure you can believe him? Hmm. Well, I can say that I personally think he's telling the truth. Perhaps. Yeah, I thought of something, but it was ridiculous. Forget about it. There's no way Isaac Foster's anything but a twisted serial killer. One more question. Have you found out how he's connected to the girl? We keep asking him about her, but all he tells us is, I don't know. As a matter of fact, 
When it came to Rachel Gardner, he started asking us some questions. He wanted to know if she was still alive or not. But then, for some reason, when we told him she was, all he had to say was okay. Doctor, what was your first impression of Rachel Gardner? She seemed to be a sweet, beautiful little girl. But she had such a hopeless look on her face. I guess I can't blame her for that, though. I see. And has she told you anything pertaining to this case? Not yet. She keeps saying she doesn't know any details. What sort of counseling are you giving her, then? I want to restore her peace of mind. That's the main goal here. However, she doesn't give many facial cues, and she seems to have a difficult time expressing her feelings. It's very strange. All she wants to do is find out more about that murderer. You're right. Perhaps it could be that she can't get the murderer out of her mind. That's my theory, yes. So in light of all that, I've made a serious effort to shield her from updates regarding the case. She's obviously frightened of him, so it's been good for her. Well, Doctor, I hope she'll make a speedy recovery. I'll keep doing my best to help her heal from this trauma. Good morning, Rachel. Are you awake yet? Did you sleep all right? Yes, ma'am. We'll do your counseling session in the evening today.
I should have known. After all that, you're still wearing that boring old face of yours. Zack, how? How? What do you mean, how? Aren't you supposed to be in prison? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously I decided to change my plans. But Zack, when I last saw you, I said that I would carry our vow. Yeah, that doesn't quite cut it for me. Besides, isn't a promise made between two people? Wait. I'm not sure I get it. Are you still gonna kill me or not? What do you think? You know me. When I want something, I make damn sure that I get it. We gotta hurry, though. I don't have a lot of time here. And you better not have forgotten your end of the deal. Of course not, Zack. I didn't forget. I could never forget. We promised, didn't we? You and me, right? No matter what gets in our way. Hell yeah! So, are you ready? Yes. That's what you want. Stop crying and smile. <laughs>